never chased him, but he fled. But if I told my dad, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The key card. Whoopa! Well, Professor Eugenius, your kennel's back in action. Tiddy! Oh, why, thank you. I've been longing for a cup of tea. Yes. There's no tea left in here. Uh, mm, then I'll go ask Lisa if she has some. <gasps> Look! Professor Eugenius, you forgot the key! The key! Don't close the door! Simka, you must be joking. That's a key. This is nothing but a plastic card. But it is a key. A special kind. It's called a key card. <laughs> to open up a combination lock, you need to enter a code in the correct order. That means if you can't remember the code, you can't open the lock. But if the lock uses a key card, there isn't any code to memorize. Because the code is held inside the card's memory. And the lock can read the code from the card. Of course, key cards don't work with any lock. They have to be smart locks that are able to read electronic codes. When the smart lock reads the correct code, it opens right up. Elisa, do we have any tea here? Of course, Professor Eugenius. Wonderful. I'll take one bag, then. Oh, I left my key inside the lab. Can I borrow yours? Just don't forget to give it back. Of course I'll give it back. Come on, Elisa. I got myself a tea bag. Professor da Eugenius, dee dee the water's dee. boiling. Fantastic. ta ra ta 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 chi chi chai Wait a second. Ah, oh no. I was supposed to give something back to Elisa. Why don't you go and ask her? Right. I'll be right back. Professor Eugenius! That's card number two now. Elisa, I promised you something, didn't I? Yes, the key. You said you'd return it. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me get it. Just a sec. Oh, oh, I locked it in the lab. It's terrible. How will you ever get back into the laboratory now? You see, there is one way, but it's a secret. Would you mind leaving for a couple of minutes? Colleague, Professor, can you do me a little favor? The key. I think I left it on the table. Yeah, right. It's true. So how do we solve this? I need to think about it. What's there to think about? We just have to go and push it under the door. You think you can do it? Yeah! It's time to get to work. Hey, hey what's going on? Oh, were you just calling for me? Yeah, uh, no, Lisa, not for you. It's so heavy. Do you know where Digit ran off to? Uh -oh. <sighs> Digit's off somewhere thinking. He's always doing that when it's time to work. Ugh. Hard to port. Hard to starboard. Way to go, Nolik. Uh, uh, then who were you talking to? <laughs> Actually... Oh, what's that? Where? <laughs> what? Uh -uh. What was that? Come on, let's try again. <laughs> Look, do you see that? Ah, that, it's a telekinesis. <sighs> it's the power to transport things with your mind. You are just astounding. <gasps> was that done with your mind too? The door, yeah, sure. You are a genius. Professor Eugenius is a very talented scientist and a dear old friend of the Fixies. He always helps the Fixies, and the Fixies are happy to help him too. Professor Eugenius let the Fixies set up their school right here at his laboratory. It's hard to imagine a better place for a Fixie school. People from all over the city bring all sorts of things to the laboratory to be tested, from computers, phones, and furniture, to food and toys. Professor Eugenius uses his expertise to check the quality of all these different things. To help him carry out his experiment, his laboratory is filled with a variety of tools and machines. 
Yes, Professor Eugenius is a very smart man, but he can be absent-minded. Lucky for him, he's got us pixies around. Thanks for everything. Sliding the keycard under the door? That was Simka's awesome idea. But the door opened wide while the card was still on the floor. That's strange. There's nothing strange about it. I'm the one who opened it. How? how? I climbed in the lock, that's all. Figured out how it worked, and... Tidish! Very clever. That's a real Tidish. I guess that thinking before you go and fix something ought to be what we all study next. Fixies have a special sign I happen to discover. They have three fingers in the air and flash it to each other. They send their greetings to you. They sing them and they shout. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The catapult. Toy soldiers could have shot it themselves. Now that was a good shot. It wasn't real long and not high either. And off target. It was pretty awful. It was good, but awful. I got it. So what do we do? We need to raise it up a little higher. Hey, fire, Nolik. Why in the world would you shoot at a fixie? Fixies, they're supposed to be in school right now. Actually, I'm on my way to school. How about you, Fire? Why aren't you in class? Because there it's totally boring. But here, look at what a cool shooter we found. Ha! <laughs> what did you call it? You've got no idea what this is. It's called a catapult, guys. A cat with gold eyes? <laughs> it isn't a cat with gold eyes. It's a catapult, guys. <laughs> Catapults are ancient propulsion machines. They were used to shoot stones, heavy arrows, or barrels with burning tar. The main part of the catapult is a special piece of rope. It is twisted very, very tightly like a spring. The rope is then wrapped around a big spoon. And then, if you pull the spoon back, put a stone in it, and let it go, the catapult fires a shot. Ooh, and the stone flies far, far away. Uh-huh. All right, so here we go. Ha! Ugh, came up short. What do you mean short? What are you aiming at? You'll see. The spoon needs to go further back. Just a little. Guys, you're gonna break the glass. Nolik, now push. All right. Yes, right on target. Now let's fly out into space. Wait, what space? What kind of flying? Who's gonna fly? I'm gonna fly! Ha-ha! <laughs> right out the window! Right up to the moon! First fix it onto the world, Nolik! Are you ready for your flight into space? Yes, sir! Nolik, get out of the spoon now! I'll be the first fixie on the moon! Yeah! Nolik, enough of this! What kind of joke is this? It's not a joke at all! He's gonna fly into space! And how come it's not you? Because he's lighter! Hold on! Humans didn't go straight into space themselves. They sent dogs out there first. Nah, Chusaka's not gonna fit in here. Simka, why don't you go and let us finish? Fine, I will go. But only after Nolik finds himself a helmet. Hmm, you're right about that. I'll go find a helmet. The catapult was invented in ancient times. But people still use them today. Only now, instead of launching stones, catapults are used to launch jet airplanes. You see, the runway on an aircraft carrier is quite short, so catapults are used to help the planes move fast enough to take off. Catapults can also be used to save the life of a pilot. When an airplane has an accident, 
A catapult activates in the cabin. The pilot is shot into the sky and comes back to the ground with a parachute. A plain old slingshot is also a kind of catapult. It's just a very little one. But be careful with this toy. It can be dangerous to others and to you too. As for us fixies, the only time that we use catapults is on a peaceful mission. Pabus, hurry! Our Nolik's getting shot to the moon with a catapult! What? And if I meet new fixies up there, what should I say to them? Hi there. And you can ask them to launch you back. So? Let's do it! Fire! Launch it! Stop! Don't! Simka! Nolik! I'm not getting out! <laughs> Just a bit short. It's not our fault. You're just heavier than Nolik, and that's why you came up short. Papus, maybe we can try one more time. What? Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with a computer. Uh... Mm. Mm. This stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? She gotta know things like that. Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower, and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks, too. Push it! Wow, you did it! It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh-huh. And now the clock will go slower. Fire! Now that clock over there. Let's go do it. That's it! We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing! He got another one. Awesome! You're unbelievable. Way to go. Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! 
Yay! I did every level! Oh, thanks! You're both just... The Time Masters of the Universe! Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock! Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning! What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do, but everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done? Time masters of the universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay, we'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy to read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Tom Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha, <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The tin can. Well, what else goes? A flashlight. It's good to have when you're camping. Listen, Tom Thomas, just leave a little room for me in there. I'm good to have when you're camping, too. I'll leave you some room. Just hide in there so Dad won't see you. And you can't tell Simka anything about me going with you. All right, and last on the list, a few cans of meat. Hi, Tom Thomas. Have you seen Nolik? No. Then who did I just hear you talking with? I, uh... I was just reading the label. Huh. Where did Nolik run off to? Simka, do you know... Um, how come these cans have no way to open them so you can taste what's inside? What do you mean? Don't you know what makes canned food special? It comes in a can. <laughs> the thing that's special about canned food is that it can get stored a long time without spoiling. You see, meat and vegetables spoil when harmful bacteria start multiplying inside of them. So, if you can get rid of the bad bacteria or stop them from getting into the food, the food will last a long time. That's why jars and cans are sealed very tightly. This stops harmful bacteria and air from getting inside and spoiling the food. So you're telling me that Nolik's not here, right? Looks 
like he's really not here. <laughs> Who is that? Where? <gasps> All right, now I remember. There's another can I should take with me. There's something fishy happening here. Hey, guys. My mom threw this can out a long time ago, but I hid it for later. I knew I'd use it someday. And who were you talking to when you said guys? Moi? Uh, you're here and I'm here, and that's two of us. Look at this great can I got. There's nothing great about it. Put it down on the floor. You see? What? Oh, it's crooked, and so what? So what? It's all swollen. And when it's like that, you know that inside the can, bad bacteria is growing and spoiling the food that's in there. It went bad? There's a way to check. On every single can, you can find the date it's good until. Sooner or later, even canned food will go bad. And of course, dairy foods like yogurt or milk can spoil in just a few days. When you buy food in the store, it's very important to always check the expiration date. The expiration date's the last day that it's safe to eat that food without worrying that it may have gone bad. You can find the expiration date on each box, jar, or can of food, so pay attention. And be very careful not to buy or eat any food after its expiration date has passed. And if you see that a can is swollen, throw it away immediately. If you eat it, your belly can swell up too. Unfortunately, when food spoils, it's impossible to unspoil it, and then even the fixies won't be able to help. Oh, my mom probably saw that this can went bad over a year ago. That's why she threw it into the trash. Right, shame on you for picking it out of there. You could have poisoned yourself and poisoned your dad as well. Yeah. And the other cans, are they swollen too? They're fine. Goodbye then. It's a shame I couldn't find Nolik around here. Papus wants to give him a brand new pack of mat as a present. To me? Aha, I gotcha. <laughs> I had a feeling you would try to sneak away in Tom Thomas's bag. You lied, that's not fair. And hiding, that's fair, right? Tom Thomas, are you ready? I'm ready. Great, then let's get going. Hooray! We're going camping. <sighs> I want to go camping, too. Don't worry, I'll go camping with you. Really? Really, really, really. To that house outside our window. See how huge it is? Please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't.